the decision by the Punch newspaper to address President Muhammad Bukhari by his military title has generated mixed reactions from Nigerians. In a symbolic demonstration of its protest against the alleged autocracy and military-style repression, the medium decided all its titles would henceforth prefix Bukhari's name with his rank as a military dictator in the 80s, major general and refer to his administration as a regime until agencies of government purge themselves of their insufferable contempt for the rule of law. The senior special assistant to the president and media and publicity, Garba Shehu, in a statement, agreed with the newspaper, saying a newspaper does not have the power to change the title of the president. While some Nigerians see the move as necessary, others feel the initiative would definitely not make any significant change. And now, Wahab Shichu, a legal practitioner, join us via telephone to share his thoughts on this development. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for seeking my views. How would you react to the decision by the Punch newspaper to address Buhari by his military title, Major General? Thank you. My response will be analytical. Well, generally, I'm not inclined to agree that uh, the present administration is veering towards dictatorship. I will, on the other hand, not be a party to any attempt to prevent the current administration from being criticized. And the, the, the reason for that is simple. Is criticism evil? According to an American psychologist, even when criticism is vindictive, you could see how a constructive effect. Because the person unfairly or fairly criticized will take him in order to forestall for the scandal. So what the point has done is perhaps to remind the current administration that we are in a democracy. And there are certain fundamentals of, of the democratic tradition. One, respect for constitutionalism. Two, respect for the rule of law. Three, respect for due process. Four, the type of fundamental rights. Five, transparency and accountability. Six, freedom of the electoral person. Seven, zero tolerance for corruption. Eight, zero tolerance for impunity. And lastly, good governance. These are the fundamentals of the democracy tradition. So if any regime fails to act in line with these fundamentals, we are entitled to criticize the regime. And in criticizing such a regime, it should not be seen as being less patriotic. It should be seen as an attempt to promote the fundamentals of the democratic tradition. I'm happy that the current administration has taken proactive steps by withdrawing the case from the DSS and the initiative of the Attorney General. This is how it should be. We'll get to that in a bit, sir. If I may just interrupt you and ask, there doesn't seem to be a lot of worries from the side of the presidency because his aide, Garaba Shehu, feels the medium does not have the power to change the title of the president. What's your thought on this? Do you agree? Well, I, I, I do not agree with Garaba Shehu. I'm more inclined to see the action of the punch. Please, if, 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 if it can be a judge, hash, to be a wake up call on this administration that we all voted for to throw the path on the rule of law. And I think 
we should also be very careful not to label the current administration as dictatorial. Again, the background of some of the positive actions it has taken to safeguard our economy, to foster anti-corruption, and then positive uh, you know, action in some other areas. But this is not to say that this administration has also not taken some steps that can be seen as anti-democratic. That is why the point, the uh, position taken by the point should be taken or to be seen with some measure of understanding. Because the punch is one of the most potent medium of expression over the years. So I will advise the government not to be antagonistic to the punch. I will also advise punch not to be antagonistic to the government. I think this is a forum for so searching on the, on the part of government to ensure that in a democratic government, we do not subvert democratic testimony. You said something just moments ago that we should take care not to refer to this administration as a regime. But the action taken by the newspaper um, is saying that they are protesting what they describe as autocracy and military-style kind of repression. In your opinion, has the president recently exhibited any of these tendencies in spite of the good work that he seems to have been doing, in your opinion? Now, what I, what I want to say, we should not use one or a few, a few isolated instances to pass a general condemnation on the administration. I mean, we should not start the administration with a general block on account of few instances or isolated instances of, of infraction. There's no, uh, there's no democracy anywhere in the world where you don't see a uh, few infractions here and there. But what you should do is, is aware of those infractions against some other person of the administration and take a stand. And I do not see the, the Buhari administration as generally dictatorial. But I see it as a government that we must continuously put on, on their toes to, to ensure that whenever they be out, they are willing to lie in order to preserve to the, uh, the rule of law and our democracy. Thank you very much. I'm afraid we have to leave it there. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, that was a, a legal practitioner and um, an, a counsel to the EFCC, Wahab Shichu. Now, the immediate past Chief Justice of Nigeria, Walter Onore, has been barred from traveling out of the country by President Muhammad Buhari. The move may be part of a fresh probe into Onore's affairs. Anore was convicted for not declaring his assets by the Code of Conduct Tribunal in April. An internal report issued by the Nigerian Immigration Service stated that Onore, his wife and daughter, were attempting to travel to Accra, Ghana, when they were escorted by immigration officers. His passport was flagged because Justice Onore's name was on the watch list. The passport is currently in the custody of the NIS. According to a source, the passport seized from Onore was not a diplomatic passport, but the ordinary green passport. We still have Wahab Shitu on the line to get his quick reaction on this. Thanks for staying with us. Straight up, what is your reaction to Onoge being banned, barred rather, from traveling out of the country? Again, my response to that will be analytical. As a stakeholder uh, and a officer in the Temple of Justice, I'm worried, I'm sad at any measure that will tend to bring our administration of justice into ridicule. Again, one must also be conscious of the fact that certain security op operatives may be overzealous in their reactions. So I think we need to wait for government reaction 
to what has been published today concerning the chief justice of the Senate before we take a final stand. Because security operating sometimes are overzealous in carrying out directives. So I would prefer to suspend my opinion until I get government official reaction to what I have played out. But generally, or not yet, as former chief justice of the, of the Federation, deserves to be treated with respect as a senior citizen, as somebody who has presided over our judiciary at a certain point in, in, in our history. So what I would say, I think we should, we should tell you why and our way government reaction and the reasons for government reaction before we take any action. Because this is a strictly security issue. And some, there are certain information that government must be privy to that we are so full populace might not be aware of. So let's wait for government to react to the present development before we form an opinion. All right, Mr. Shitu. Again, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you.